Around two weeks ago, the Boston Marathon and the London Marathons have been run and won, and I have some data that I've extracted from Strava to look into what devices people were using and some other stats that I find quite interesting. Okay, the data sets that I have, they were extracted on the same day as the events were both run. So the people who have uploaded instantly or as soon as they've crossed the line or within a few hours, they're all included. Anybody the day after, not included. What this got me was about 10% of the overall entrance from Boston and around 20% overall from London. So a good sample size. The full data will be below on my website as well. So if you wanna deep dive into this, I'll put links below, go crazy with it. Today, we'll just have a look at the general overview and a few interesting observations. Okay, Boston Marathon. There was around 3,600 activities I extracted from that of around 30,000 entrants. Male and female ratio, so 68.8% male, 31, 32% female. So that's the split for male, female, and 25% of those were Strava premium users. Onto the devices, this is what I find most interesting. Garmin at the Boston take 10 positions of the top 11 devices used. That is a phenomenal stranglehold on the running market. The, uh, the forerunner 235 takes the crown, just nudging out the 920 XT. The 920 XT device is number one in any triathlon or Ironman event that I look at, so multi-sport. But as you can see, the 235 completely obliterates the rest of the field there. Other notable devices or things that I found interesting from Boston was there was 24 Apple Watches. And as always, the iPhone completely obliterates the Android when it comes to the Strava app being used natively on the phones. And there's one single Edge 510 being used, which is a cycling computer. I actually contacted the athlete and asked her, how did you actually mount the thing? I wanted to know if she got really creative with it. And she said, oh, I just put it in my pocket and stopped it at the end. So interesting to see there. I guess in summary there, Garmin completely obliterated the field there with the numbers and the forerunner 235, king of the castle. So one data set is somewhat interesting. Put it up against another one and we get some good information. So London, I extracted around 8,000 activities from around 40,000 starters on the start line. So again, around 20% of entries. The male-female ratio participation levels at London mirrored that of Boston, almost to the percent. So very, very close numbers there that you can see. Strava Premium users, only 20% of Strava Premium users in London. That's an interesting one. Could it be that over in Boston, Strava's an American company, they're gonna have more supporters over there? Don't know. Onto the devices people used at London. The standout, hands down, this is quite surprising, the Strava iPhone app. Number one, completely obliterated everything. Even the number one spot that we saw in Boston, which was the Forerunner 235, that came in second place, but the iPhone, a clear winner in London. And in third place, another interesting showing, the TomTom Tom GPS Sport coming in in third place, where it was only 12th place over in Boston. I'll take a stab in the dark there of why this is taking place. I'd say the UK sales and distribution may be a little better than they are in the States because that was only 12th place over in Boston for that unit. So a good showing from TomTom Tom there. Again, the iPhone compared to the Android absolutely obliterates the Android. So 111 Apple Watches in use at London, which when you scale that up, it's about twice the participation rates for the Apple Watch in this event than it was in Boston. Another interesting one that an American company is twice as popular in the UK. And uh, a handful of cycling units were used. So we did see some 810s, 510s, 25s, 200s from Garmin in use. So there's a quick rundown of both the Boston and London Marathons 2017. Very similar data in regards to the female male participation but the devices used were quite different between the two events. Now, I'm not a runner or a marathon expert at all, and I'll need people to validate below or correct me if I'm wrong. I'm guessing what's happening here is at Boston, there's a hard qualification process required. So we're not seeing the casual runner with their iPhones or their bike computer thrown in their pocket just to go for a run. Over at London, we're seeing more the casual data that I'm pulling out from there. And why I say that is because the Strava iPhone app is more your casual runner rather than a dedicated device. And we're also seeing quite a number of bike computers there in London as well. So it's as if people have gone, well, I need to track it. What do I do? GPS in the pocket, go for a run. Anyway, let me know if that is the case. If Boston is more of your hardcore qualification process and London has more of a, I guess, a participation run, but also the elite side of things as well. Interesting stuff from one year. What's gonna be even more interesting is next year and the year after to overlay these and see where the trends are heading. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.